Hello. Hello. We're back. Oh, we can't see ourselves. I thought we, we could see ourselves. We can't see ourselves. No, no, that's part of the joy of how Mac has set this up. Right. We don't have to look at our own faces. It's great. Hello, people. This is Paul. As I said, Paul's art director at Fail Better. Yes, this is the second episode of our podcast. And we're going to be talking a bit about Sunless Skies, specifically about the art, um, and then taking any questions that you guys have in the chat. Hi, Mikey. Hello. Um, so, we had a few questions come through on Twitter. Mm. Um, you may or may not know that we have a job opening at the moment for a 2D artist who Paul is hiring. Yes. <laughs> and someone says, what are you looking for in a 2D artist? And what would that person get to make for Sunless Skies? What are we looking for? We're looking for somebody who can do a percentage of my job. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I've been doing um, pretty much all the art for Fail Better for seven years. Uh, and my fingers are very sore now. We should. This is literally all of it, like silhouettes through to character portraits, through to islands, rocks, backgrounds. Yeah. Like unless it literally says next to it, drawn by Mark Penman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we've had a few the smaller um, rocks. Like a, a few of our interns were able to. Yes, and uh, yeah, we had we 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 had a little bit of uh, freelance help for Zamarin in the end, but basically, I spent about a year drawing roofs for um for Sun the Sea. <laughs> Uh, which was at first thrilling and then less thrilling. Um, <laughs> and then I discovered a site called Roofpedia, which helped me a lot. <laughs> Are uh, you back on Roofpedia now? Sorry? You were back on Roofpedia. Yeah, week. well, I was, I was researching new kinds of roofs because we, we need to find space roofs now, which oh is a, a whole different thing. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, we're looking for a, a great all-rounder, basically, because it's a small company. Uh, so you might have to do icons. You might have to do game assets. Um, you might have to do marketing art, yeah. silhouettes, all, yeah. kind of, um, all, all the kinds of stuff we do. Um, and it's someone who has particularly strong like line work, you were saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we... I don't know. I need to look at portfolios and, and see what people have. I so mean, it's an all-rounder uh, thing, it is. My style is quite painty these days. Uh, I mean, it's weird. When I started um, doing this job, I, I, I've never had any art training. No. Uh, so if you look back through the Fall of London icon library, it's like this sort of Cretaceous Jurassic <laughs> layering of me learning how the hell to draw, how the hell to draw. And you put up that tweet the other day of the hat that you first drew. <laughs> That's, yeah. This literally like MS Paint hat with big teeth, and then this beautifully kind of vector um, hat that you'd done for the app for the logo for the app store uh, MS Paint was beyond me I did that with a pencil you know I mean that's how that's how stone age it was um, and how did you how have you taught yourself then other than drawing every single day because you had to because it was your job yeah how have you taught yourself how to draw over seven years from literally a scribble of a hat um, <laughs> it's a big question <laughs> yeah uh, uh, com well, I mean, a lot of it is just drawing every day for seven years. Uh, you know the whole thing about 10,000 hours. Yeah, Malcolm Dabwell, teach yeah. Teach you something. I think I'm on about like 6,000 hours, so I'm getting there. You'll uh, be a genius in 4,000 more hours. Yeah, I'll be. There you go. I, know, I think genius, you have to be like 100,000 hours or oh, something. I, don't, I think 10,000 hours is like you can do it, you know. Um, oh, God. That's such a long time. That and I spent a lot of time on YouTube. Um, it's, you, I mean, you, it's, you couldn't have a better time to want to learn to to change a career, particularly if you want to be an artist, because it's all out there, it's all free. Um, there are hundreds of people who want to help. And like game design as well, same thing. Yeah, We've got work experience um, people in this week who made a game from scratch themselves mm. um, using Game Maker tutorials that they found. I know, it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, uh, is it uh, Tom Francis has done some amazing sort of like soup to nuts tutorials on how to make stuff? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, you can you can get sort of free Unity licenses to play around with. I mean, Bonkers. tools are just everywhere, just sitting there waiting to be used. Yeah. Um, and it, I just couldn't encourage anybody to pick up, just pick up Unity and have yeah. a go. And pick up, like, I don't know, go to Sumo Paint online <laughs> or something. Like, what tool yeah. would you use <laughs> if, you, Sumo, if you had to get a free one? Yeah, Sumo Paint or Gimp or Krito, they're all good. I mean, it doesn't, the tool doesn't matter. Yeah, you know they all have their um, they all have their, uh, their their quirks. But I think don't bother paying for one straight away. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that's that's all we know about art. Okay, bye, Paul. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, okay, we were talking about um, Amber Emotions on Twitter. Says yeah. she was talking about the new style for Sunless Skies. You may have seen some of this in the concept art that we've put out in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, the 
concept art style is much more painterly than it has been in Sunder Sea and Fall in London. Yeah. And she was asking how are we going to marry that with in-game assets and with the look and feel of our games overall? That's a very good question. Isn't it? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll tell you in a couple of years. Um, <laughs> we'll look back at the end of the game and we'll know how we did it. <laughs> I think. I mean, I can sort of answer that. Uh, I, there, there are base. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are broadly two kinds of art in Sun the Sea and in Sun the Skies, yeah. uh, and they're quite different. There's there's asset art, which is the sort of slightly more realistic kind of Diablo-y kind of uh, looks at a glance like it might be real um, yeah. thing. Uh, and then there's the illustrations, which are obviously much more um, uh, illustrative. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. Freer. Good word use there, Aaron. Um, <laughs> so I think the the game as, um, the game itself. I mean, obviously it'll look very different because it's a totally different place. But uh, the way the assets are being made is is much the same. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a, a sun the sea rock and a sun the sky rock will look broadly similar. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, when we get onto the illustrations and the UI, which Liam's doing some amazing work designing, uh, then uh, you'll see um, some of the influences that we've been talking about in the blogs. So yeah. uh, the Art Nouveau influence, which is very sort of prevalent at the time of the game, um, that whole decorative art thing. And at the same time, uh, because it's the frontier and because it's uh, you know it's it's a place that people are just expanding into, uh, then there's a sort of uh, a roughness to them. Yeah. Um, I really like that kind of art. I mean, I, I look at a lot of um, concept art and stuff that is done in a hurry, uh, and often it's just got much more life than a really finished piece. Yes, yeah. Um, it's almost like the work takes away from the, the the expressiveness of it. Anyone, I mean, yeah, anyone who's drawn for any length of time will know the feeling of doing a quick sketch in 10 minutes and thinking, oh, that's amazing. And then spending 10 hours working it up into something completely lifeless that just lays yeah. there like a mattress. Yeah. Uh, so you you can often lose that sometimes in the process. So I think part of it is an attempt to hang on to that. Yeah. Uh, and to sort of keep it. Uh, Chris is talking about, um, I don't know how much I can say about this. Okay. Uh, I think we've mentioned it, but uh, he's talking about a quest where you, uh, you take a painter out mm. uh, into the wilds and you hopefully you inspire them with crazy sights. Uh, and in return, maybe they'll paint you a picture or something. Yeah. And I think that idea of trying to capture, you know, uh, the visage of a horrible writhing monster before it actually eats you, you know, that would be speedy brushwork. <laughs> so, uh, it would be like in Uncharted where Nathan Drake just pops his notebook out and does like, yes. and it's like a really gorgeous <laughs> Produces little Produces perfect sketches every he's, time. He's such a uh, bastard. <laughs> make me so angry. Uh, there's so much ludonarrative dissonance in that game, let alone the amount of people you kill. Just the amount of sketching you can do at the drop of a hat at the top of a mountain. Oh, Dali, I like you. Thank you. Hi, Dali. Oh, yes. Hello, Amber. Yeah, your question. I hope we answered your question. Yes. Um, so we were also going to talk about something that Sylvia asked. Sylvia is our friend yeah. from Bioware. Oh, hello. Uh, she Sylvie. may not well be in the chat because it's a time zones, but uh -huh. she asked us just the other day how the high wilderness in summer skies will connect physically or metaphysically to the locale of fallen london and sunless sea well so we know we know what it looks like right uh yeah kind of <laughs> uh <laughs> things may change things may change things, um, all of this is unconfirmed until the game is literally out so i mean uh, how it connects physically is via um the avid horizon which players of sunless sea will remember is a sort of ice bound gate in the far north um, which you can, spoilers, uh, end your game by travelling through. Yeah, in Sun of Sea, one of the end conditions does involve the Abbot Horizon. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how to get there. Yeah. But that's. I'm sorry if, if we wanna, spoiled that, but you know, it's been out like more it's than It's been year. out for two and a bit years. But if um, you want to find out a bit about how we're going to transition into skies and what that might be like, yeah. check out that quest. So, uh, what we have is that plus time, basically. I mean,. Um, the idea is that this is a possible future of, of the Fallen Line universe. Ten years or so have passed, um, and uh, the gate has been opened by uh, by the establishment, and they've started to move out and colonise it. <laughs> so that's just, yeah. Well, quite, yes. yes. Nothing bad has ever happened at the Avid Horizon. Um, <laughs> Uh, we sort of hinted at this in the last game, uh, and you may find some hints to it in Zabmariner as well, if you look carefully. Um, but we really wanted to actually get out there and uh, and, and explore what it would be like. Um, and the most thrilling part of this process of these last couple of months has just been 
uh, are watching the, the, the world take shape. Oh, God. You're the um, one drawing it. I'm the one who comes over your shoulder and is like, no, oh, that's what the Avid Horizon Gate looks like. Well, drawing it, writing it. I mean, we, we get these, we get these, we get bombarded with these amazing documents from Chris, which are full of incredible detail that I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, they go, um, the content team go away and come back, and all of a sudden, like a universe. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like fantastic, that. yeah. It's mad. So uh, the Avatar Horizon Gate is a physical thing existing in space. Yeah. You can access it from beneath. Can I commit to that? I think I can. I think it's Chris, certainly, Chris it certainly physically said. exists at um, at the other end. Yeah. Yeah, you come through it, and I think there's a, I think there's a sort of kind of Ellis Island vibe when you get through. Yeah. Because it's, it's where the new tourists get fleeced, you know. Yeah. Um, and physically, what it'll look like, that's actually quite challenging because um, because of the whole top-down thing. Yeah. Um, and we kind of got away with it in Sun the Sea by sort of suggesting this gate shape with some angels on top of it. But um, my my problem with it at the moment is which way it faces. Uh, if it's going to be vertical and you fly through it, or if it's like a sort of a thing that's spread out before you. Or is it like Sonic leaping through a ring? Yeah. So the ring is like. <laughs> I mean, it's just my it's, references are old. And finding something new there because the whole, you know, the whole sort of Stargate trope is so uh, is is so well worked. Yeah, you've got your Stargate. Um, you've got your I'd, I'd like it to look like something you've never seen before. Uh, and I imagine that that idea of the um, theological in space, yeah, that element is something that we hinted at in Sun of Sea. So it's something that might come back, maybe. Yeah, that's a that's like a, 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 a barrel of worms. That one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Chris is it. Chris is your guy for that. But the idea of uh, something you'd never seen before, the idea that when people perceived an angel, they couldn't pass them. So angels always used to say, be not afeared, as the first thing, because yes. they look like 75 snakes and a donkey. I am appearing in a form in which you can understand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I think that all will come into play when we start talking about the judgments, which again... Ah, uh, yes, okay, we're not going to talk about that too much. much. Uh, Chris did say, uh, the Avid Horizon... The gate leads to a distant part of the high wilderness. This is all stuff that Chris is happy that we say. Mm, yeah. Um, so it's not a part that's near Earth. You'll find yourself really in space. Um, not a part that's actually all that near uh, the centres of civilization um, in the wilderness either. At I think. all, yeah. Uh, I think you'll uh, you'll be sort of stuck in in the in the badlands for a bit. And you will be able to the other side of the Avatar Horizon Gate the first toehold that London got on the high wilderness mm. will be a visitable location. So this port, which is a bit like an Ellis Island, um, fleecing the tourists, sort of every, yeah. ev everybody rushed to this place to try and make a buck um, place will be a place you can play. Yes, and then there'll be people who will be escaping from the other side for whatever reason. Yep. People who are trying to escape from the high wilderness for whatever reason. Yeah, be, so um, like a transient population. Yeah, dangerous place to be, I think. Yeah. So I hope that covers everything. Mm. Oh God, what are people saying? Uh, yeah, Avatar Horizon on the other side. No, the port has a name. Uh, satiated vertical. Yeah, sold. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who built, who the, built the gate oh. in the first place? Well, that is a question, isn't it? You, Captain Law, of course, would want to know that. We, well, I, I have not got an answer for you. Um, Painter Chris is maybe hungry for morsels. Chris, if you star in a future podcast episode... Well, I'm, oh, sure, I'm sure you can decide to drop One a of these days, I'm going to get Chris to come and star in an episode. Uh, he's literally um, always eating a flake, so he's he'll, he'll <laughs> he's a crumbly kind of guy. <laughs> um, is Sunless Skies a DLC for Sunless Sea or a standalone? It is a brand new standalone game of the same sort of size and scope as Sunless Sea. Yeah, not connected. Nothing to do with any of the stretch goals from the last Kickstarter. You don't even excuse me, motor dust it. Sorry, I'm just bashing yeah, on. Yeah, this mic. is a whole new thing. It's it's um. You don't even need to have played Sunless Sea to enjoy Sunless Skies. We do have a DLC for Sun the Sea. It's called Zamarina. It's very good. You yeah, get a summary. Uh, but this, no, this is a whole new game. It's gonna. Yeah, totally, uh, totally unconnected. So you should feel free to back on the basis that you don't even need to have played Sun the Sea. Just, we've got a Kickstarter coming up. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, what else you got? Uh, what else have we got here? Um, Snug Law, who is all laid through someone we know from the forums, mm. is asking about the release timeline for Summer Skies, which we can talk about because we've just settled on full release is planned for April 2018. Yeah. Which represents 18 months in, pr in production and pre production. So we've already begun the work. Yeah. Uh, April 2018. And somewhere between here, when we get funded, hopefully at the end of next month. And April, we will also be going into early access, so you'll be able to get in and play much earlier than that. Yeah. Although at the beginning of early access, it will literally be one region, 
that's correct, right? Uh, the plan is, yeah, to do one region in as, uh, in as complete as way as possible. Um, obviously, there will be you know unfinished bits and so on, because early access is like that. Uh, and anyone who played Sun of Sea when it was back in early access, you would occasionally run across a, a grey blob with a name on it, rather than an actual island. Um, I, d I didn't play it that early. That's okay. If you were very lucky, you were, you were destroyed by a text monster. Uh, because for a while um, <laughs> we didn't have the monster art in because hey, only one artist uh, taking our applications now. My hands, um, my hands. <laughs> so we we basically put them in just as as text. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> there was a monster called the Behemoth which was basically just a fish with a really big moustache. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the sillier concepts we came up with. He's lovely. Uh, but I, we didn't get around to drawing him till quite late. So uh, for quite a long time in the early access, you could be attacked by the word behemastage, uh, which Amazing. was actually quite badass and usually quite usually cool. killed you. Yeah, Maybe we should take that for a future game. Well, we were sort of tempted. I mean, it was a bit meta, but we were sort of tempted to keep it in for a bit. But uh, it didn't work Just out that way. Just a living word. Yeah. On the, on the scene. Well, it's a sort of. I mean, you know, if there's any universe where you could be attacked by a word. Then it's ours. It is ours, yeah. Yeah, maybe in um, Polis Room. Mm. Um, if you have questions for us in the chat, it would be really helpful if you at Fail Better Games, so it gives us that black bar with our name on it, and that will be easier for us to pick them out. But I do see a couple. Will there be references to Fallen London on Summer Sea characters in Skies? I have spoken to Chris about this. Um, and the likelihood of a returning character is more pro than not. Yep. That, that is seems all fair. we're going to say about I mean, that. Time has passed is, is the other thing. That, yeah, yeah, ten years later... Who who would be there and why and what's interesting? What's an interesting story to tell about that character? That's what that's what we're thinking about now. Whether or not it's one or a few or we don't know, but yeah, hopefully. Mm. Uh, my first hour of Mariner with my hun was my hundredth of Sun Sea. How many captains were you on by the time you got there? <laughs> uh, what type of idea did you have for fixing the combat? Hey, suicide. We know you from the forums. Loads. Um, most of the prototyping that we've been doing has been about combat, I yep. would say. Um, we will have a lot of information about that. Well, as much information as we have will be in the Kickstarter pitch. Um, but it's not something that I can confidently expound on off the top of my head because I haven't seen the latest prototypes. So stay tuned. More about that later. Um, yeah, we don't want to give too much away about that until we're really happy with the direction. Um, yeah. So I, we're, 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 working, we're spending a lot of time on that because it's, it's, it's a very important pillar of the game. Yeah. Um, well, I love crafty. Oh Lord, <laughs> we don't have a sanity meter. We have a terror meter. It's yeah. really important to us that the distinction is made. It's not about losing your men your mind and your mental health, because that is a really weird place to take things, and it's not something that we would do. Being afraid is something else. Um, but yeah, terror is going to be there. Of course, there's going to be stuff you see in space. Yeah, terror isn't gonna, going anywhere. Uh, and it will have some. It will be doing some interesting things this time around as well. Um, it'll be sort of very directly affected by certain things you find in the world. Yes. Uh, can we talk about, are we allowed to Spectacles. talk about this yet? Spectacles and yeah. wonders. Uh, amazing things you see that lower your terror and horrifying things you see that raise them in big bumps. Um, but again, to be con to, to be revealed at some point. Yeah, the exact nature of spectacles. Will I be able to connect um, my phone to count, to count some of the skies and the guy? Uh, I think I could pretty much say no on that one. Yeah, so someone else asked about this as well. Somebody asked me about meta qualities. Um, we're not going to connect Fallen London and Sunless Skies up in the same way that we did with Sunless Sea. Um, the ongoing burden of looking after those codes and people asking us about them in support has just been ridiculous. And seven years in, the support burden that we deal with, you would not believe. We don't have a separate support team. Um, we all have to answer tickets and it is we're doing everything we can with this Kickstarter to balance the amount of work that we have and the amount of people that we have so we can deliver the whole game in a really timely manner mm. and make it really bloody good. So there are a few things that we're not able to do this time. One of them is going to be meta qualities um, and uh, some of the Kickstarter backer rewards, the nature of those rewards is going to be quite different to the nature of the rewards we were able to offer for Sunless Sea because now we know and understand our capabilities. If we offer a huge Fallen London story to some backers that would come at the expense literally of like a festival this year in Fulham, London. Like that's yeah. how much work it is. So sorry, not as not, not a fun, happy answer that one. Uh, what else? Ack fail better games. <laughs> uh, American leanings in the art direction. Where are these uh, Art Nouveau guys working? Europe mostly. I think, yeah, I, a lot of it was sort of Czechoslovakia and Europe and um, American leanings. I don't know. I'm, I've, uh, 
I mean, I you know, we talk about uh, art direction and borrowing from certain styles, but at the end of the day, uh, a lot of it's going to come down to the style that I've developed and you know whoever else is drawing it has developed. Um, and I think I uh, I've certainly got some American influences. I'm a big fan of like Rockwell and Dean Cornwell and people like that. Mm. Uh, Lion Decker and so on. So that sort of quite bright, um, you know, heavily lit, lots of rim lighty kind of stuff is is is, is good for me. Um, character creation work in the broad stroke. Ooh, okay, well that's going to be interesting. Yes. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, well, you've seen uh, a complex character portrait in the Kickstarter. Yeah, I think we are we are working on um, uh, an avatar creator. You know uh, that in uh, Sun of the Sea. Uh, and in Fallen London, actually, uh, your your character is a silhouette, uh, and you choose from a number of them. Well, we wanted to take that a step further, um, and so basically, we've got the two D silhouetted equivalent of a full scale Bioware um, character creator. <laughs> you uh, heard it here first, folks. It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's like a, the at the moment you're able to pick between different facial yeah, features. Yeah, you can swap out a lot of facial features. Hat features uh, you clothing. can choose hat and Body noses types. and and clothing and so on and so forth and and once we get done adding options to it I think it'll be quite a powerful tool and obviously if you just want to get out there you can press a button and it'll yeah. it'll come Loop. up with something for you random um, there, are, there are also going to be more um, it's going the creation of the character background itself is going to be more nuanced I think mm. that's safe enough to say not just the opinion yes not just the yeah. appearance sorry of the character uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff about that, but I think Chris would be angry with us if we talk if we we said too much about it. Yeah, just yet. it's cool, guys. It's 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 every as with everything in the sequel, you you're able to really take a hard look at what you made first time around and really improve it in a very meaningful way. Yeah. Um, I keep saying this, but it's not like making a sequel to a film. Like you can't sometimes capture the same. No. Yeah, that's it. And I think the sequel. I mean, it's it's weird how differently they're viewed. I mean, in sequels to films are sort of gradually slightly sniffed out. I think on the whole. Yeah. Uh, whereas I mean. With a game, it's just like, well, these things are incredibly hard to make, and you're going to get a bunch of things wrong, um, and and you're going to get to the end of that process, and you go, God, I wish we could have added this. Yeah, I wish I knew um, two years ago what I know now about how that works. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could do that? Um, and and the mark, and because obviously the game market is absolutely saturated with games, um, and people people like something new, but they also like uh, worlds that they understand. Uh, and worlds that they've lived in. So I think, um, you know, taking that world and building on it and creating new things in it and giving you new mechanics and new features you can live with, new pictures, and, you know, it's it's, uh, it's just broadly a good thing. I think as long as you move it on, I wouldn't have wanted to make Sun the Sea 2, you know, um, Sun the Seer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Tootling not... around on the undersea for a bit longer, I think, you know. It's not very creatively interesting. I feel like we've changed it up... Uh, uh, with skies on it on a sort of pretty fundamental level while still keeping the core of, of what people liked about it. Yeah, I'd agree. And yeah. there's some stuff that we've added that is just going to make people so happy. <laughs> um, I hope. Uh, is the possible future in Sunless Skies going to be referenced in Fallen London? Probably not because it's referenced in Sunless Sea. Um, do you have any particular advice for someone going for a design and narrative internship with you? Read everything on the page. Do exactly what it says. <laughs> Please don't apply when when internships aren't open. People do that, and we go, we're not open, and they go, well, I wanted to apply anyway. And it's like yeah. it says on the page, don't because we're so busy. Um, but internships are open right now, and um, make a game and then send it to us is the best way to get a design and narrative internship with us. <laughs> That's yes. all I've got. Read the page. Yeah, read the page and just Part do one. all of yeah. it. If, if you can read, it. then you will definitely be will definitely be pro. Yeah, reading is definitely a um. The persistence bonus. mechanism of keeping things between characters is there. Every setting the game will be stuck on a previous action. Oh, so this okay. So some you may not know that some people have seen a preview of the Kickstarter page, which is why we're getting quite specific questions. Mm. Um, this is relating to the fact that in Summer Skies, when you reach a major port, what you did to get there is set, and then if you go out from that major port and die, you'll be reset back to the major port. So what happened previously will be set. Yeah. Um, and then you get the islands in front of you will be reshuffled and you'll get another go at going out again. Um, and there are lots of more kind of nuances and, and bits and pieces about how save files are going to work. Yeah, I mean, I think I can answer this one fairly safely. Um, it depends on uh, which uh, mode you're playing in, basically. Yeah. Um, in our sort of standard mode, then your lineage continues 
when you die, and so anything you've done, yes, continues, unless you want to start from scratch. Uh, but in the merciful mode, I believe, um, and Chris is going to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that you can uh, say, oh, um, I'm just going to go back to the save. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In which you uh, and you can, you'll be able to save, or you will be save, will be saved for you uh, at um, smaller ports. Yeah. So there's not going to be much to manual describe. savings. Yeah, that one's going to... Yeah, we haven't really spoken about that yet. It's hard to explain. But yeah. it will be really simple and obvious in the game, I think. Uh, Our standard mode is is uh, you get your game saves at the major port. Um, and... <laughs> Merciful mode, what is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Invictus uh, over here. Yeah, I think... Uh, we had a merciful mode in Sun the Sea. It's 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 there. It's there um, you know, it's, people it's are like they aggressively push. less visible than, than than it could have been, perhaps. Yes, um, that's not the same as aggressively pushing the hard mode on people. Thank you, the internet. Oh, he's he's let us off the hook. Look, fair enough. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I had a whole thing laid out, but it's fine. Um, so basically, you can always start again, but you would start again in the same way that you start from scratch at London in Sun the Sea. Yes, but I think in merciful you mode you can to, just you, you can go back and save. I believe. And a big thing in the game is going to be more about the legacy and and the fact that your previous captain's actions will have implications for your future captains. Yeah, I mean, we would like people to, to, to play a lineage. I think that's the best way of playing the game. Uh, and because we want to encourage that, we're being less punishing about the whole, yeah, go straight back, go back to go, do not collect $200. Uh, so um, yeah. when you die, you'll be set back to the last major port, but you will, uh, you'll have an option to keep some of your stuff. Uh, and some of the storylines that you've started uh, won't reset; they will continue. Um, so, you know, if you've uh, on a major storyline, if you've gotten to a certain point and died, uh, then your scion or your cousin or your you know whoever it is you're playing next time yeah. uh, will continue that story. It's pretty cool. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. I can't, I can't wait to play the game. It's great. I get to work on it and play it. Um, well, that, that takes us almost to half four. Great. So um, that's almost it from us. Um, Darren, yeah, so the idea is if you die after hitting a major port, you would be picking up the belongings of your previous captain at that major port and carrying on. Yes, as a you, new might, you, might, you might be their son or daughter or, um, or whatever relationship. Wh whoever happens to inherit their, uh, their possessions. Yeah. Um, so we are going to probably wrap up in a moment or two. Uh, thank you so much for spending this half an hour with us. That was really awesome of you. Yeah. Your lives have got a lot to do in, and it's you know, it's great that you wasted this time with us and learned a bit about our game, and it's very cool. I'm so, going to go back um, to frantically making pictures for our Kickstarter. Yeah, Paul's just going to draw the rest of the Kickstarter right now. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't say how fast or slow the travel speed will be compared to Sun this year. We haven't set it yet. Um, quick question. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for this week. Please uh, come back next time. We will advertise the next kick the next Kickstarter. No, let's focus right. on the current one. We'll advertise the next podcast uh, <laughs> on our Twitch channel and on our Twitter, both of which are at Fail Better Games. You can follow Paul on Twitter at Mr. Arendt, A R E N D T. That's correct. And I am Hanchan, H four N C H A N on Twitter. Um, please do follow us and stay in touch with us. And if you are desperate to back our Kickstarter follow us on kickstarter you will get an email when it starts you won't miss any of the good stuff there are some limited rewards you will not want to miss and it's going to start on the first of february so let's go and finish making it yep let's do it <laughs> thank you everyone Bye bye, bye.